Okay, so for the last couple of weeks, today included and next week we'll talk about it just a little bit too, it's been my stated goal, it's been my stated goal that in 2011 you would become cooler. I want to help you become the kind of people that the world looks at, that your friends look at, that everybody who knows you says, man, she's just got it. They don't know what it is. They don't have any idea, but they just know that something is different. Something is special about you. And, and that's the kind of thing that I want us all to be experiencing. You know, some people have it and some people don't. Some people get it. Some people won't. And I want you to be the kind of people who get it. The kind of people who have that intangible quality that the world looks at and says, what's different about them? What's special about them? They're living a kind of life that's above the level of mediocrity in this world. If you look at the note sheet, I printed some verses down there that we've been sort of uh, using for the last couple of weeks. The first one there is Psalm 1, 2 through 3, where it says, His delight is in the law of the Lord. Whatever he does prospers. That's a huge promise God is giving to us. That if we delight more than anything in God and what his will for our lives is, then he promises us a kind of prosperity that we can't even predict. This doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be rich. It doesn't necessarily mean it's going to, that you're going to be famous. It means that God is going to prosper you in whatever you do if your heart is fixed and focused on his word. That means if you're doing anything that the Bible tells you you should do or need to do, God's going to make it happen. He's going to help you succeed in that. He's going to give you prosperity in that realm. So no place in the Bible does it say make a lot of money. So therefore, if your heart is on God, you can't say, okay, God's desire for me is to make a lot of money. But in the Bible, it does say, work with all your might. And so if you're feeling like you can't, if you're feeling like something is draining you, like your workplace, your boss, something is just holding you back, or it's not, it doesn't feel right, God's word says, work with all your might. That means if I love him, if I'm focused on that, he's going to make me successful in it. So I'm going to try to work with all my might, and God is going to give me the ability to work with all my might. That's the kind of stuff that the Bible promises you. Give your heart completely to what he wants, and he's going to make it happen. Because that's just the way he works. He likes doing things that he likes to do. So if you get on board with him, he's going to bless your socks off. And then this next passage, John 10.10, Jesus says, I have come that they, talking about his followers, may have life and have it to the full. The Bible teaches us clearly, teaches us clearly that those people who focus their hearts on God's word experience success that the world doesn't know. And that those people who know Jesus as their Savior experience a life that the world can't explain. It's full and fulfilling. That's what I want for you this year. And so for the past few weeks, we've been talking about what we call our core elements that are metaphors of the four basic commands in the Bible. If you look through the whole Bible, you can find there are just basically four commands. And they, they get summarized. Two come from the Old Testament, and then two get fleshed out by Jesus himself. And those four commands go like this. Love God above all other things. Love your neighbor as yourself. Follow Jesus and pass it on. That's basically the way it works. Those four commands, we've condensed into these four elements, and so I'll just go through them one more time just to refresh your memory. The first element metaphor we use is the metaphor of air, because in the Bible it tells us that God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and that means without God in my life, I'm just nothing. I'm dust. And so God has to be the air that I breathe. He has to be everything to me. If I stop breathing physical air for a moment or two, I'm going to begin to worry. If I stop a connection with God for just a moment or two, I should be worried. I should get back there as soon as possible. The second metaphor is fire, and fire is this metaphor used in the Bible of the Holy Spirit's presence in people's lives. But every single time the Holy Spirit is at work in people's lives, the Holy Spirit comes into a community of people, not just one individual. And so fire is this metaphor of God's power working in the midst of people who work together, who are together. And so we use this coals metaphor just like if you're trying to grill a hot dog, you need to have lots of coals, not just one coal. If you try to grill a hot dog with just one coal, you'll be there all afternoon and I'm not coming over. But if you put a whole grill full of charcoal, then just call me up and I'll be there in five minutes. Hint. 
you know, the, the springtime is going to come soon, and I will come over, yeah, if you invite. So anyway, go on to the next one. The, the third metaphor is earth, and that's this metaphor that God has made us out of dirt. That means if I'm just dirt without God, I need God to shape me into something that he wants me to be. And so in the Bible, you get kind of these two metaphors. One is God shaping me like a potter would shape clay. That popped. A potter would shape clay. And then the other metaphor is a plant that's growing out of the ground. So either one of those is sort of this metaphor that I need to grow more like Jesus. And then the final one is water. And water is the metaphor of refreshing people. I don't know about you, but I don't think there's anything better than a big, tall glass, cold, ice-cold glass of water. I think, you know, we go through all of life, and we want candy and steak, and we want all kinds of great things, but nothing beats a tall, cold glass of water if you're thirsty. You know what I mean? If you're thirsty and I give you a steak, you're going to be like, looks good. I need, I need some water. You know, if, if you're thirsty and I give you some potato chips, you might be like, oh, that's good, but I need some water. This world needs water, and they're trying to get it by eating potato chips and steak and candy. And what we need to do is we need to offer them the real, true thing that's going to quench their thirst, and that's, that's Jesus. And so God is calling us to provide for this world blessing from what God has blessed us. That's what we're talking about today. This is the fourth aspect of you having the coolest possible life, and that's living a life that that gives away what God has given to you. So look at this verse here. In Matthew 28, 19 through 20, Jesus says to his followers, he says, therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And surely I'm with you always to the very end of the age. Underline a couple phrases there for me. First, underline the phrase baptizing them. And then second, underline the phrase teaching them to obey. Jesus says what I want you to do now. He says to his followers, this is the moment before he ascends back into heaven. Miraculously leaves the earth. The moment before he does that, he says to his followers this. He says, I want you to reproduce what I've done for you in the lives of other people. And here are two things that you need to do to reproduce that life. Number one, you need to baptize them, which is Jesus saying, get them to the place where they want to change their life. They want to hand their life over to the care and control of the God who loves them, and they'll symbolize it by being baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's what Jesus says. Baptism is this symbol of a person who's getting their old life completely